The video you're about to see provides examples of what I call the tsunami of deception that is hitting Christian churches. But before I discuss this deception, let's see what Romans 1 verse 16 says. It says, For I am not ashamed of this good news about Jesus Christ. It is God's powerful method of bringing all who believe it to heaven. This message was preached first to the Jews alone, but now everyone is invited to come to God in the same way. This good news tells us that God makes us ready for heaven, makes us right in God's sight when we put our faith and trust in Christ to save us. This is accomplished from start to finish by faith. As the scripture says, the man who finds life will find it through trusting God. So we can see from this that we are saved by faith in Christ alone and in the atoning work of Christ on the cross through his death and resurrection. But in the same chapter of Romans, we see a very disturbing warning. In Romans chapter 1 verse 18 to 28, it says, But God shows his anger from heaven against all sinful evil men who push away the truth from them. For the truth of God is known to them instinctively. God has put this knowledge in their hearts. Since earliest times, men have seen the earth and the sky and all that God made and have known of his existence and great eternal power. So they will have no excuse when they stand before God at judgment day. Yes, they knew about him all right, but they wouldn't admit it or worship him or even thank him for his daily care. And after a while, they began to think up silly ideas of what God was like and what he wanted them to do. The result was that their foolish minds became dark and confused. Claiming themselves to be wise without God, they became utter fools instead. Now in verse 32 it says, They were fully aware of God's death penalty for these crimes. It's talking about sexual immorality and all kinds of things like idolatry in this passage. They were fully aware of God's death penalty for these crimes, yet they went right ahead and did them anyway, and encouraged others to do them too. Now, G.K. Chesterton says this, he says, When men choose not to believe in God, they do not thereafter believe in nothing. They then become capable of believing in anything. Absolutely true. Now, in Philippians 3 verse 18, we read this. There are many who walk along the Christian road who are really enemies of the cross of Christ. Their future is eternal loss. They are proud of what they should be ashamed of. In this video, you're going to see false teachers encouraging people to worship angels. But in 1 Timothy 1 verse 3 to 4, we read this. Try to stop the men who are teaching such wrong doctrine. Put an end to their myths and fables and their ideas of being saved by finding favor with an endless chain of angels leading up to God. Wild ideas that stir up arguments instead of helping people accept God's plan of faith. Now, in the New Testament church, Gnosticism became a big problem. It was a form of mysticism that encouraged the worship of angels and subjective mystical experiences, rather than adherence to the teachings of the Bible through what the apostles and Jesus himself taught. Again, in 1 Timothy 4, verse 1 to 2, we are warned. But the Holy Spirit tells us clearly that in the last times, some in the church will turn away from Christ and become eager followers of teachers with devil-inspired ideas. These teachers will tell lies with straight faces and do it so often that their consciences won't even bother them. The true gospel of Jesus Christ has always come under attack because Satan will do anything in his power to subvert God's truth and the great significance of salvation by faith in Christ alone. Satan attempts to divert people into accepting false doctrines which are inspired by demons according to the Bible, meaningless so-called spiritual exercises, or by diverting their worship elsewhere, anywhere but Christ. This diversion can take many forms, including, but not limited to, personality-driven church, postmodern heresy, the love and worship of money, and the love and worship of self. The sleight of hand used by Satan is to subtly lead people into idolatry. This strategy is designed to divert worship from Christ, as I've said before, to almost anything else, as long as Christ himself is not the object of worship. And this is the real deception behind idolatry. It inevitably results in the worship of false gods and the rejection 
of the teachings of the Bible. In this video, you will see the fruits of the deception of mysticism, which promotes engagement with meaningless subjective spiritual experiences. Mysticism is like a cloud. It appears to have shape and form, but once you enter it, you realize that it has no real substance and certainly has no power to save anyone. Behind the false facade of the mystics movement lies a myriad of deceptions. Firstly, false teaching inspired by demons, such as encouraging the worship of angels or claims that we do not possess a sinful nature as the Bible teaches. Secondly, the encouragement to participate in subjective spiritual experiences, which the Bible often describes as spiritism. Thirdly, teaching that angels are our spirit guides and that we are to engage with them. At the heart of this movement is the false teachings of Roman Catholic mystics who allegedly had extra biblical supernatural encounters with God. These mystics are placed on a pedestal within this movement and held up as models of Christian virtue. Unfortunately, close inspection of the so-called Christian teachings of these mystics exposes them for what they really are, false spiritual teachers who themselves have been deceived. Now, just before we watch the video, here is a final warning to every Christian who wants to run after extra-biblical, mystical, spiritual experiences, thinking that in some way this will make you more spiritual. In Matthew 24, the disciples asked Jesus, what will be the signs of the end of the age before you return? Now, Jesus' response is very striking. In verse 4, he replies to his disciples by saying, don't let anyone fool you. Or, in other words, don't let anyone deceive you. So we can see from this response that deception comes through men. We know they're going to be false messiahs, false Christs. You will deceive many people. The Bible warns consistently against those who claim to represent Christ and the church, but who are actually inspired by demons and who, under cover of the cloak of Christianity and the church, set out to divert people and to shipwreck the faith of true believers. Now, Jesus also taught that we can judge the nature of a tree simply by studying the fruit that grows on the tree. Bad fruit on a tree means that there is something wrong with the tree, and good fruit means that the tree is healthy. Now, you are going to judge for yourself in this video whether the fruit of these so-called ministries is good or bad. Oh, it's not me, I 
が来ましたので、注意してください。いやいや、なっても買ってもあれだ。なっても、いや、すごいすごいすごい。いやいやいやいやいや。うわー、ダンビだ、ダンビだ。いやいやいやいやいやいや、天国だ、天国。すごいぞー、来たぞー。I want to read from, from Luke chapter 1. Some of you think that I don't give readings. Well, I was brought up in the Baptist church. Hey, isn't this pulpit good? You know, I, I, I've been going through different stages of drunkenness and the stage I'm at at the moment is slouching. 
I've gone through the hiccup stage. I've gone through the phase of heckling the preachers. Mm. I got a kiss off George today. <laughs> I told him he needs to get a shave. <laughs> oh, okay now, be before we take off, you know, before we go surfing, let's get the reading done. Tell you what, let's look at chapter one. Mm. Settle down now, please, ladies and gentlemen. Luke chapter 1 and verse 5. You can't copy it. <laughs> I didn't ask for this. No, I, I didn't. The problem was, when I came through the doors in November 94, and the Lord said to me, what do you want, John? I said, I want to get drunk. I forgot to tell him for how long. <laughs> now, I don't mind being drunk. It's great. But I said to the Lord, Lord, I don't like looking drunk. You know, your eyes get bloodshot. And... and he said to me, John, you see, some of you think God doesn't talk like that, but he's very... He's a fun God. Let's get the fun back into church. And he said, John, you see the rock stars when they're on the TV the next morning being interviewed on breakfast TV? Do you notice they always wear sunglasses? So he said, Get yourself a pair of sunglasses! <laughs> I call these glasses glory shades. I'm sure Moses would have wore them if they had sunglasses in the Old Testament. Now, 
Hang in, please. Hang in. Fasten your seatbelt. We may have a bit of turbulence tonight. And you may want to run. Well, hang on in. Let's go back to the reading. Luke chapter 1. This, this, and this. Cheapening of God's word is probably one of the most serious blasphemies an individual might ever commit. When you take the word of God and make it a joke and cheapen it and try to, not even able to read it. This man has been going on now. You've only saw clips. He's been going on for some 20 to 25 minutes, opened the Bible at the beginning, but still has not read a verse. Appreciate that. Oh, yo, yo, yo. I think I'm going to wreck because, you know, they, they say when you, you put two, two users together, and you see, when Winnie gets up here, and then you expect me to get up and say coherent words later, afterwards. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Oh, dear Jesus. Oh, Lord. <laughs> yes, Lord. I've learned a, a quick prayer. I'll teach it to all you really quickly. Okie dokie, Lord. Okie dokie. Lord, I love your heavy, drunken glory. Uh, Lord, I love it. Lord, thank you, Father, for more of a heavy, weighty, drunken glory in this house today. That's my favorite little bit of you, Jesus. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Is the bliss, is the joy. Oh, oh, oh. You know, Isaiah 35, it says, you will be overtaken by joy. That means taken over by joy. That means possessed by joy. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Lord. Oy, oy, oy. Oh, my goodness. Thank you, Lord. Uh, sometimes the Lord, the, you know, I used to have a teaching gift. <laughs> I have a, a good gift of uh, getting struck mute in the middle of a service. One of those few guest speakers who you invite in, and then you may not be able to speak. <laughs> huh. Oh, my goodness. Thank you, Lord. Well, today, um, just invite, we just thank you, Lord, that, that we have these little fat friar tuck bartender angels that travel around with us, and they wheel in the barrels from heaven. Some healing angels that come, but let me tell you, these little fat friar tucks, they start yanking on your legs, yanking on your arms, you better watch out. The very first time I ever went into the wine cellar in heaven, and there is wine in heaven, the Bible says so. And, um, whoa! And I went into this wine cellar, and there's all different kinds of wine. There was barrel after barrel yeah. after barrel yeah. after That's barrel up. of That's wine. Up. And there were names, like labels, on the wine barrels. And there was, like, the wine of peace, and the wine of joy, and the wine of health, and the wine of strength, the wine of prosperity. And the room was full of angels. And they looked... Like they'd been imbibing. They were made to live in that room, I, th I think. But, uh, whoa! They smiled at me and they said, would you like some? And I said, yes, I would like some. And um, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. And he said, I never want my people to be drunk on the world's wine. Yeah. 
He said, this is the real wine of the glory. This is the wine of the kingdom. And he says, and I want you to come anytime you want <coughs> and drink as much as you want. <coughs> Any kind that you want. <laughs> term ecstasis worship? No? <laughs> well, many people haven't. It's a powerful word. It's a Greek word that means, well, you'll find out in a, in a little while because I want to introduce to you Caleb Brundage. He's one of our itinerant ministries, but also just a worshiper with so much passion. In fact, if you've been to any of our conferences, you'll see Caleb flagging and worshiping God and opening up the heavens and operating in a real breaker level anointing. is hungry, hungry for the mystery of God. This generation longs to experience God in a way, in an abandoned way ever before. They long to release their passion for God. When we're making decrees and we're praising God, the music and you're jumping and you're, you're, you're dancing and you're moving around, well, the words that we're speaking becomes one at a cellular level in your body and it's not like you're learning it, it's part of who you are. It's no longer that you have to study the Word. It's no longer that you have to study the Word. It's no longer that you have to study the Word. When you're inside of an infused atmosphere with dancing and your body is moving and the word is coming and the music, it becomes part of you. And it's just like, oh man, with the, with the rhythm, the sound, and the repetitiveness of the music, the word is living into your body, not just your mind, not just your soul, but the whole mind, body, and soul. Ecstasious worship is worship that when you go outside of your mind, when you go outside of your mind, when you go outside of your mind.
force yourself into abandoned worship with God, going into the ecstasy of God. This is Brooke Boone, founder of Holy Yoga. We are starting a video blog. We'll come out a couple of things a week, primarily on the Word of God, and we'll do some yoga and, and things that you can participate with. But primarily, the most important thing about Holy Yoga um, is the Word of God and connecting with the Spirit of God. So, in that vein, we're going to launch this um, speaking just about the Word of God, at least initially. Hi, many of you have asked um, about Christian yoga and how I came to teach Christian yoga. And so I thought I'd give you a little rundown of the history and where I come from in my um, yoga practice. Um, so here it is. I was raised Catholic and um, really believed deeply and believed deeply in the power of prayer and concentration and focus and intention. Um, from that, when I started to teach yoga, I actually was um, exploring Buddhism. And um, then I also explored Hinduism. And through both those experiences, I found that my relationship with Jesus actually deepened. And um, so Christianity was my, my spiritual path, and um, Jesus Christ is my father in this. I know the first miracle that Jesus did, he turned the water into wine and I just rest assured that he has turned all of my experience with God into wine. <laughs> so that's, I just want to say that before I start, that wine is very intoxicating and he has turned my experience with him into a long drink of wine. <laughs> <laughs> it was a pretty normal communion service. It's just a big festival. It's a big feast. It's not supposed to be a, a morning, dirgeful, depressive, introspective, anal, retentive TSA scan. <laughs> and that's not my fault. <laughs> I thank God for his wine. I thank God for the cup of the New Testament. A big cup of wine. <laughs> and I just want to tell you tonight that he can turn your experience from water into wine. Oh, Jesus.
Lord, release the mystical powers of heaven. Stigmatize us. Lord, I want a sticky. Give me the five rich red rubies of the stigmata. I want a sticky that glows. I want a sticky that grows little golden lilies from my hands. the miracle of lactation from our bodies as we nurse from the breast of heaven.
You know, we need a little help around here. I think it's okay to talk about the angels in the church. Amen? Yoing, yoing, yoing. Help. We need somebody. Help. I mean, if we think we can get along. Oh, just, let's just focus on Jesus. Don't talk about the angels. Just focus on Jesus. Don't talk about human beings or animals or any other creature the Lord's created. <laughs> I think maybe we need to learn a little bit more about the spirit realm. What do you think? I think maybe the more our eyes are opened up to that realm of his glory, hoy, 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 mm, things are going to be a little more easier, a little more cream and butter on our feet. Oh, thank you, Lord. Whoa. Just move in healing and forget talking about all that other stuff. He said, because, Todd, you got to get the people to believe in the angel. I said, God, why do I want people to believe in the angel? Isn't it about getting the people to believe in Jesus? He said, the people already believe in Jesus, but the church doesn't believe in the supernatural. Well, we do need to understand what we need to address now. Angels are messengers. One thing, they're not, you know, we, we do not worship angels. Uh, we don't command angels. Even Jesus didn't do that when he walked the earth as a man. He said, if I ask my father, yeah. will he not send a he legion directs. of angels? You, you know, and... Uh That's not seeking angels, because we never seek angels. Our conversation is directed, Father God, I thank you there are angels, yeah. and, and they're... Angels, angels, That's not seeking, angels, because we never seek angels. And I want you to lift up your voice and call down the angel. Just angels, angels, come on, God, send them. Angels, 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 come on, God, send them. Angels, 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 come on, God, send the angels. Come on, send the angels. But when you mention I saw an angel, a red flag goes up in them, not because they go, well, I don't know if I believe you saw an angel, Todd, so much. Just as that rubs me wrong, because in the past, I, when I hear that kind of language, I saw an angel, I think of all the mess that comes along with it. That mm -hmm. person never preached the word, and, and I don't know that their life was... Yeah. And, and I think word. that's important. These are things we have to look at. We have to be... You know, we're also warned to don't be puffed up by these things, and watch out for those who are puffed yeah. up in using them. And without my testimony of the supernatural, the seer realm, the revelatory realm, the miracles that have been happening in this meeting would not be happening. It is a gift of the Holy Spirit. I think a big problem that people have with, with the angels, and rightly so, mm -hmm. is all the abuse and, and, and the lack of fruit that's come after somebody's claimed they've had this oh, great yeah. big spiritual experience. The I, I think a lot of people believe in the angels, but, but they see people running around having these experiences that aren't anchored in the Word, and they don't know the Word, and they don't preach the Word. They preach experiences. And An angel comes to me about seven days before I'm commissioned into full-time ministry. About seven days towers through the apartment above me, a okay, 14 foot tall angel or whatever. And as soon as I went to go to sleep, a white lightning bolt came into my hotel room and as quickly as I could scream the name of Jesus, an angel stepped out of the white lightning bolt and stuck his hand in my belly and on an electrical current, I was electrocuted. You know, people We've asked had all the time about Emma and, and I do believe that an angel can take on a female form but I, I made it clear in the last bulletin that we did that, that I've had experiences uh, on several occasions with an angel by the name of Emma. And uh, that angel is not, you know, the healing angel that I make reference to in my testimony when I talk about the angel of the Lord and the healing angel. But, but I have had an experience and many other experiences with many other angels. And I'll, and I'll, and I'll say this for all the critics out there. What are you talking about, Emma and a female angel? Just had to say that for some people out there in heresy land. There is.
is no female angel directing me. You, you take angels out of your Bible, you're not going to have a whole lot left. And I'm going to have my wife, Jessa, share a dream that she had. And I'm going to tell you what God's been speaking to me about. And I believe it's the key that's going to release the greatest miracle anointing for the church. Jessa. So a couple of nights ago, I had a dream where Oral Roberts was speaking to Todd. They were, I, I didn't understand what they are saying, but I remember they were talking. And then he looked over and he saw me and he stopped. And he ran over to me and he put his hands over my eyes and he said, what do you see? And so I looked and I didn't see anything at first. And then all of a sudden I saw this elephant racing across my eye. And Oral Roberts said, he put his, his hands over my eyes and said, what do you see? And I said, I didn't see anything at first, and then all of a sudden I saw this elephant racing across my eyes, and it was, it was dancing, it was going crazy, it was just, it had this big smile, and it was just, just going crazy, and I said, it's a, a wild elephant, I see a wild elephant. And then I said, what's, what's with the elephant? He said, exactly, what is it with the elephant? And then I looked again, and in in that vision what was highlighted was the trunk of the elephant I said it's the elephant nose and he said yes and I said it's discernment and he said exactly and then he says do you see the lion and I closed my eyes again and then I saw the lion and the lion it was just a golden lion and I will you know, walk by faith when everything around you looks dark and dim is discerning the times and season by getting a hope from God um, whew, getting <laughs> Getting a hope from God <laughs> to be able to see, to discern the times and the seasons that's ahead of you. And the thing about the elephant, it wasn't just an ordinary elephant, it was a wild elephant, a wild elephant. It was radical, 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 radical. <laughs> wow. And the elephant means a great impact. And I really felt like what happened in Lakeland was just a beginning. It's just an introductory. It's just an introduction. It's just a table of contents of what's to come. And I felt like the great impact is greater, greater, greater. It's the great impact. And the greatest impact that you can have is bringing the kingdom of God to earth.
of among us. All right. Tori's got something she's going to release. And when this releases, it's going to be like a starting gun for the ministry time. So those of you who would like ministry, go ahead and stand up. Get in the middle section. Youth, children, those who have been touched by the fire, prepare to minister. Yeah, he's here. He's here. He's here. <laughs> Two days ago, I saw Jesus opening himself up and walking in our midst. <laughs> Today, the phrase that keeps going in my mind and in my heart is that uh, my deep calls out to his deep. My deep goes out to his deep. <laughs> My deep goes out to your deep, Jesus. My deep goes out to you. <laughs> My deep goes out to his deep. My deep goes out to his deep. And then to break over limits and experience increase. So let's say you've got a faith measure for, I don't know, let's take a financial area. Let's say you've got a faith measure for believing for $1,000 a month to come in. Well, when the breaker anointing hits you, you'll break over into increase. So your faith will allow you to even double or triple. The breaker anointing. Whoa. 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 Ho, ho, ooh, I don't often get visited like this during a film shoot, <laughs> but I'm getting visited right now by the breaker anointing, and the Lord just, whoa, told me that even though he himself is the breaker, whoa, he's assigning a breaker angel to our ministry right now, oh, whoa, whoa, oh, wow. I can feel its presence and its power right now. And um, I'm not going to stop the camera just because this is happening because it's, it's, it's amazing. Uh, wow, wow. Hi there. Wow. Well, this is our third week of talking about angels and uh, their ministry. And I hope that you've been enjoying the uh, different insights and clips with uh, Georgian. But today I want to introduce you to Julie Meyer. And she's going to talk about how angels are affected through our worship Last night as we got into new york with you here mm. uh we came into the hotel we had some fellowship yeah came out of the room where we were having fellowship mm -hmm. and oh my gosh this <laughs> big angel a large angel wow. was waiting for us in the hallway yeah. and we just got blasted by the glory of god because angels they've been mm. standing in the presence of mm. god for thousands of i was years. praying i said god 
what what is the purpose of this angel? What yeah. is the name of mm -hmm. that angel? And we can ask the Lord for names. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. he's 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 named people. He's named trees. There, you know, there's a a cypress tree and a fir tree and a pear tree and an apple right, tree. Right. They have names. Things are named. Right. Angels have names also. Right. Who knows those names? Mm -hmm. Well, the name above all names knows the names of yeah. the angels. So we can ask Holy Spirit. We can mm -hmm. ask God. What is the mission and what is its name? So I felt the Lord say that the, mm. the name of this angel mm. is you know, with you. Uh, I want you to understand today <coughs> that God, as he is commissioning this generation to move in supernatural power, in supernatural dimensions, angels are going to be a vital part of what God has called you to do. God will send angels on assignment to help assist you uh, to do what he, is, what he has called you to do. And uh, we're going to be back in just a little bit we're going to take a short break and we're going to be back in just a little bit and we're going to hear more from patricia king on the whole subject of angels and what their involvement is even in the realm of media because god has not only anointed patricia with supernatural prophetic anointing but also in the media realm what's the role of angels in media well we're going to find out very shortly when we come back from this short break are you tired of living under a constant sense of spiritual warfare in your life where you always feel like you're under? Well, I tell you, God doesn't want you to live under. He wants you to live above. He wants you to live from the realm of His glory with His power and His authority. On today's show, I want to share one of the most powerful teaching series I believe that God has given me on angels, the discerning of spirits, and overcoming spiritual... Lord, I thank you for the crack. I thank you for the crack to us. The river anointing. Father, in the name of Jesus, I loose an opium angel and a myrrh angel upon this viewer in Jesus' name. Seeking God. Saya pagi -pagi benar mencari and, Tuhan. and wisdom came to me. Dan hikmat datang kepada saya. As soon as as soon as this encounter was done, Segera sesudah perjumpaan ini selesai, it was about a 40 minute encounter. Itu perjumpaan itu sekitar the spirit of wisdom. Roh hikmat datang. Wisdom stepped aside. Kemudian hikmat ini, roh hikmat ini menyingkir. And immediately two more angels stepped forward. Two more. Two more. Kemudian dua malaikat lagi maju ke depan. Uh, council, uh, malaikat nasihat dan kekuatan. Council stood up first. Yang council itu berdiri dulu. Came forward. Dia maju ke depan. He had a four foot scroll in his hand. Dia memegang scroll gulungan kitab empat kaki di tangannya. It had writing on both sides. Dan di kedua bagiannya dua sisi. Saya ada dalam roh. I was in this encounter. Saya ada dalam perjumpaan ini. Chair. Duduk di kursi saya. Council had the four foot scroll. Kemudian uh, council punya uh, scroll gulungan and kitab empat kaki. And immediately my head went back. Dan langsung saja kepala saya ke belakang. My mouth opened up. Mulut saya terbuka. And council rammed the scroll down my throat. Dan kemudian council dia masukkan gulungan went, kitab itu ke saya. my belly. Masuk ke dalam perut saya. And there was a beautiful angel standing in front of me. Kemudian ada malaikat yang indah sekali berdiri di depan saya. This angel, malaikat ini, her, his name is Emma. 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 Namanya adalah Emma. 
This angel I've seen before. Malaikat ini saya pernah lihat sebelumnya. This, this angel would come into our meetings from time to time. Malaikat ini sering muncul di pertemuan kita dari waktu ke waktu. And every time Emma would show up. Dan setiap kali Emma muncul, there would be miracles, financial miracles. Akan ada mujizat-mujizat keuangan. Uh, there would be gemstones and gold dust. Ada batu-batu permata, kemudian debu emas. All different kinds of wonderful things would take place. Segala macam hal-hal yang luar biasa terjadi. And uh, this angel Emma was standing in front of me. This angel Emma Malaikat ini Emma, female, perempuan, beautiful iridescent hair, indah sekali rambutnya, pink and purple and white, and berwarna pink, silver and gold, ungu dan putih dan emas dan perak. Her, her eyes are purple. Matanya itu ungu, radiating glow. I want to make a point. Saya mau buat poin di sini. Angels are neither male nor female. Malaikat itu bukan laki-laki atau perempuan. We were talking about the angels. Kita lagi bicara tentang malaikat-malaikat itu. And I was watching the smoke door open. Dan saya melihat pintu asap itu terbuka. And I was just getting ready to punch him and say, Hey Randy, look at over there. Saya baru saja mau senggol dia bilang Randy lihat ke situ. And he punched me. Dia justru saya senggol saya keluar. The smoke door. Bukan Jeff lihat pintu asap. We both saw the smoke door open up at the same time. Kita sama-sama melihat pintu asap itu terbuka bersama. And as we watched the smoke door materialize. Dan ketika kita lihat Lihat pintu asap itu termaterialisasi. Out from the smoke door came Emma. Keluar dari pintu asap itu keluar Woo! Emma. <laughs> We were worshiping in high praise. Everyone had their hands up and worshiping Jesus. Kita lagi menyembah semua. Fifty carat red ruby, ruby merah lima puluh carat. Don't, ah ah ah, don't touch. Fifty carat red ruby.
Before we get started in our angel discussion, Marie and I want you to know that um, when, you, when you start on this spiritual awakening journey, one of the biggest ways to, to open things up for you is to say uh, out loud and to your spirit guides and your angels, uh, you just say, I- I'm not afraid, I want to learn. I want to experience more spiritual things and, you know, start talking to other people about that as well. Don't just keep that inside. By putting out that intention and by talking to others, uh, you are opening up spiritual doors. You're opening up new things that you would never have experienced before and you're letting your spirit guides and everyone know that you're not afraid. Celestial blessings, my name is Helen Demetrio. And today I'm going to talk about signs of the angels. And some people have asked me to explain how we can get a feather to fall into our path in order to know that the angels are with us. Hi, I'm Melissa Kitto, the Angel Guidance Coach from www.communicatewithangels.com. What I'd like to share with you today is how to hear your angels. It's one of the most common questions I get asked, how can I hear my angels? And yes, your angels actually are... As we're connecting with our guardian angels, it's very important that we relax our physical bodies, that we calm our nervous systems, and that we quiet our mind. So the techniques we use for that are some simple breathing techniques that come out of the yoga tradition, that's three-part yoga Hi, breath. my name is Psychic Tanahoy, and thank you for joining me today. Today I would like to talk about guardian angels. You know, all of us, when we come onto the earth, when we're born, we're all born with guardian angels that watch over and protect us from the moment that we're born. The sad thing is most people don't even realize that they've got guardian angels watching over and protecting them, let alone that they can talk to them and call on them on a daily basis. I personally think this is really a shame because it's like having best friends, invisible best friends, spiritual helpers that can guide you and help you with anything in your life, any problem, any concern, any struggle. They can give you insight, they can give you guidance, they can give you information, they can give you answers. You've got all of this help available, yet most people don't even realize that they've got guardian angels that they can call on. 